Hello guys, this is our channel MediMind. As promised in our last video, we are here with another topic about formation of hemoglobin. This video is the continuation from our last video. If you have not seen that, please go and watch our video and come back for better understanding. Today we are going to discuss about how hemoglobin is formed. Formation of hemoglobin begins into the proerythroblast. It continues even into the reticulocyte stage of RBC. Therefore, when reticulocytes leave the bone marrow and pass into the bloodstream, as we saw in the last video, it forms some amount of hemoglobin until they become mature erythrocyte. In front of your screen, you can see the basic chemical steps in the formation of hemoglobin. Now, what is the basic chemical steps? First, succinyl-CoA formed into the Krebs metabolic cycle. Then, it binds with the glycine to form a pyrrole molecule. Then, four pyrrole combine to form protoporphyrin 9 which then combines with the iron to form heme molecule so this is how heme molecule is formed now after formation of the heme molecule each of them combine with the long polypeptide chain and then globin synthesized by ribosome and form a subunit of hemoglobin called hemoglobin chain so this is how hemoglobin chain is formed and four of this hemoglobin chain binds together loosely to form a whole hemoglobin molecule. So this is how hemo hemoglobin molecule formed. Now we'll talk about hemoglobin chain. Depending on the amino acid composition, there are different type of chains such as alpha chain, beta chain, gamma chain and delta chain. In the adult human being, the most form of hemoglobin is hemoglobin A, which is consisting of alpha and beta chain. And each hemoglobin in hemoglobin molecule contain iron. Now, the types of hemoglobin chains in hemoglobin molecule determine the binding affinity of hemoglobin for oxygen. So each of these hemoglobin chains binds with the one molecule of oxygen and make it a total number of four molecule oxygen. Now we'll discuss about major function of hemoglobin. The primary function of hemoglobin is to combine with the oxygen in the lungs and then to release oxygen in the peripheral tissue capillaries. Now let's discuss about iron metabolism. Iron is very important for formation not only hemoglobin but also other essential elements of the body like myoglobin, cytochromes, etc. It is important to understand the means by which iron is utilized in the body. Now what is the average quantity of iron in our body? It is total 4 to 5 grams iron in our body. From this 4 to 5 grams there are 65% are in the form of hemoglobin, about 4% in the form of myoglobin about 1% in the form of various heme compounds and 1% combined with the transferrin and about 15-30% to is stored in the for later use. Now we'll talk about transport and storage of iron. When iron is absorbed from the small intestine, it immediately combines with the beta hemoglobin and apotransferrin to form transferrin. This whole process occurs in the blood plasma. The iron is loosely bind to the transferrin and can release to any tissue at any time and point. Now, some excess amount of iron remain in the blood. Now, where it deposited? It deposited especially in the liver, hepatocytes, which, which are the cell of the liver, and in a small amount in reticuloendothelial cell of the bone marrow. And the storage iron is also called ferritin. Now, when RBC lived their lifespan of about 120 days, as we said it in our last video, they destroyed after 120 days. Then, hemoglobin released from cells and is ingested by monocyte and macrophage cells. And their iron is liberated and stored mainly in the ferritin pool to be used as needed for the formation of new hemoglobin. Next, we'll discuss about daily loss of iron. A man excretes about 0.6 mg of iron each day, mainly into feces. Now, additional quantities of iron are lost when bleeding occurs. For a woman, additional menstrual loss of blood brings long-term iron loss. This is about 1.3 mg per day. Now, let's talk about absorption of the iron from intestinal tract. Iron is absorbed from all parts of small intestine. Now, how this absorption occurs? Liver secretes moderate amount of apotransferrin into bile. It flows through the bile duct into the duodenum. Here the apotransferrin binds with free iron and also certain amount of iron compounds such as hemoglobin and myoglobin. Now the question is 
from where this hemoglobin and myoglobin come from. It comes from meat we ingest. Now apotransferrin combines with the free iron and form transferrin. And after this, it binds with the receptors in the membrane of the intestinal epithelial cell. Then by pinocytosis, for those who does not know about pinocytosis, it is a process by which fluid and nutrients are ingested by cells. So then by pinocytosis, the transfer the transferrin molecule is absorbed into the epithelial cell and later released into the blood capillaries beneath the cells in the form of plasma transference. So this is why this is called plasma transference. Now iron absorption from the intestine is extremely slow. At a maximum rate, it is only a few milligram per day. This means when we eat a tremendous amount of iron containing food, only a small proportion can be absorbed. So this was all about formation of hemoglobin and iron metabolism. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Our next video will be about WBC. We are going to upload more videos like this. So please make sure you like, subscribe and share our video. So till the next video, goodbye and take care.